My name is Lewis Crandall, Lewis Eugene Crandall. And uh, 50 years ago, we came up with an idea of building an amusement park for Arizona. Well, it all begins with a man named Lewis Crandall, who was an advertising agency owner here in Phoenix uh, in the early 60s. He uh, was a graduate of ASU, went to Mesa High School, um, and he fell in love with Disneyland when he went to visit California in the mid to late 50s. And uh, he became very infatuated with uh, Walt Disney's vision for an amusement park. And he quickly decided that this needed to be done uh, at his home in Phoenix. Disney people, the, the, the men that built Disneyland uh, took, um, uh, took an interest in what the little guy in, in Phoenix, Arizona was trying to do. And they just couldn't wait to be a part of it. And they came over, these men that, that Walt Disney used to design Disneyland, they're out of business. It's there, that's done, and some of them stayed there, and some of them now are available. And I hired them. Uh, the park winded up being located uh, on Wa East Washington Street, right on the Tempe Phoenix border, south of Papago Park. And when he saw this location, he noticed there were two ravines running through the land which turned out to be, in the end, would be the lagoon and the river ride. And he thought this would be an ideal place. And then all of a sudden we found that there was a piece of property available. Washington and Van Buren came down and then in the Tempe. And uh, we, uh, I was able to uh, put together a little corporation and we uh, were able to buy a piece of property there. When uh Lewis Crandall uh, got in touch with Wallace and said, I've got this property and uh, these are my plans. And I think initially we had heard for so long, there's going to be an amusement park over here. Or there's going to be an amusement park somewhere in the state. And it never it never had the financing, whatever it was. So we waited a while, and then all of a sudden, he started sending us pictures of the rides. And then when the Lagoon stage came in, that was, that was our stage. And uh, we just had a, a, an absolutely marvelous time. Later that same day, Ladmo's on stage. The crowd is cheering. Hold it. Justice! Here comes Captain Super now. Uh-oh. The crowd is leaving. Forget it, Captain Super. You're all through. Where are they now? In those days, Tempe was here, and then some miles away was Phoenix. So it wasn't this one contiguous city like we have now. Tempe definitely had its own feeling and was definitely its own community, more isolated than today. And in between that was uh, Legend City. Legend City was our amusement park. And no, it wasn't as fancy as Six Flags over Omaha, or it wasn't, it wasn't as spectacular as a Disney park, but it was ours. And it was pretty darn neat. It really was. I mean, the, the rides were pretty cool rides. There was the, the tunnel and then the uh, sky ride. It was ours. We could always go to Disneyland, but that was theirs. We were kind of guests there. And when, when you've got your own, uh, even, <laughs> even in the summertime, when you would have burn scars on your tush, from sitting on the metal seats on some of the rides. Great fun. Legend City was a great place to work because the employees were mostly high school and college age. So we were all young, full of energy. You know, our whole life was ahead of us. And it was like, I used to look forward to going to work because I was gonna have a great time. And on the weekends in the winter, that meant on Saturday, I think we opened at noon and ran till midnight. So it was a really long day, um, but it was fun. You look forward to it. And then because we were all young and full of energy, after work we'd party 
for a few hours and then sleep for a few hours and then go back to work at noon on Sunday. <laughs> you could drop your kids off at Legend City. You didn't see every child with parents and grandparents escorting them around. Kids had the freedom to wander around their theme park and just have a great time. And at the end of the day, when they had booed themselves crazy over Gerald and cheered for Ladmo, they could always go to the payphone <laughs> and call mom and dad if they hadn't made arrangements already. You know, you'd walk in just a miniature of Disneyland. There'd be the train, the station, you'd go through gates to get in, then you'd walk down the main street, and then off to the right would be the uh, boat ride where it'd take you on a river, the river, and it'd go around, there'd be Indians and stuff like that. Um, and uh, further down would be the Lost Dutchman's Mine ride, and uh, you know, you had the kitty land with all that stuff going on there. There'd be an island where the band played, where you kind of walk down, and the band would be down there. That drew a lot of the young high school people. This magnificent train cost $85,000 and, but oh my, there's dirty work afoot. It's a real old-fashioned train holdup. Fortunately, the good guys are on the job. Naturally, the good guys win, and the Legend City Railway chugs away to happy horizons. Well, the river ride was a boat that went around a channel of water, and, and various animated things happened. Um, a bear came out, you know, Indians attacked. You had to go under a waterfall and through a cave where there were pirates and such. And the spielers who pilot the boats are alone worth the admission price. Listen to this fine piece of emoting. It's all be real, real quiet. Oh dear me, what's this train? Oh, to my right over there! Watch out! And it's straight ahead, folks. One, two, three, it's going out of the wind. There's Indians on our right over here. We're going to be caught off the crossfire now. Everyone, please, get down. Would you kids, please, get down. Watch out! Oh, look straight ahead. Look at... Pete Fernandez, he's painfully struggling, trying to get that arrow out of his chest. Look at him, dear me. You ladies get down too, but... That's pretty good. That a strange looking rock formation. The slightest sound might cause us some problems now. Shh. Watch out! No, no! We had to have security around Gerald constantly, because he was rotten. He was terrible. It was the greatest character to play in the world. But then, so Gerald, finally Wallace, caught Gerald causing some kind of trouble, blaming Ladmo. Gerald gets sent off stage. The band does a number, giving me just enough time <laughs> to go boom, boom, like this, put the costume on, grab the guitar, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, ah, Hubcap and the Wheels. It was insane. It was absolutely insane. And uh, particularly because everybody knew it was the same guy that they were just booing as Gerald. But Legend City was, was so unbelievably important to, uh, to us. I got a call from the manager of the park saying, as I remember, saying there's going to be a movie film there in the morning. Can you get some people and secure the park? So we did that, and I, that's all I knew. I had no idea, and the back gates opened, and in came uh, this motorcycle gang amongst other people, and the name of the gang was uh, the D Dirty Dozen, and they were a pretty notorious gang in back in the day in the 60s in Arizona. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Anytime. Barf Boulevard. What was Barf Boulevard? Well, the official name was The Hill, and that was just an area where there were the, the, the carnival kind of rides. The Cuddle Cups. The Tilt-A-Whirl, the Cuddle Cups, the rock a -plane, rock, yeah. uh, the Paratrooper, the kind of rides that spun you around and could make you a little nauseous with the ensuing results of you just been down having a hot dog or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the ever ready hose. Yes. So, so yeah, that particular section of the park got a lot of cleaning. No one wanted to work there. <laughs> <laughs> no, th but those were fun rides. For the ride operator, those were the good rides because you could find money at the end of the night ah. from people being turned upside down. <laughs> Toward the end, the, like the last couple of years, Wallace would say, looks like they're in kind of serious financial uh, problems. And I don't remember the rides being uh, in bad shape, or I don't remember them not always operating. Uh, I've read that. Uh, I really only remember what fun the audiences had. So many people have, still have, great memories. Uh, if you mention Legend City, I remember I used to go there. My mom used to take me and you know, it just, we had a birthday party there. Or, I mean, it, people just have wonderful memories of this place where mm -hmm. the rest of the world disappeared and you were there. Every few years we hear of a developer who's talking about, you know, bringing a major amusement park here. And, uh, but it never seems to materialize. And I think the perceived failure of Legend City, maybe the perception that, oh, it's just too hot to be here, you know, it's too hot to have an amusement park here, look at what happened to Legend City. I think some of these ideas are still floating around out there. If you've ever been in any of the towns where there's a Six Flags over something, they got heat and humidity. So I have no doubt that there will be another uh, amusement park, a theme park of some kind, because there's just so much potential profit here for that. But there'll never be another Legend City. The Legend City uh, uh, lives on in the minds and hearts of many thousands of people. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for visiting with us at Legend City. All rides and attractions are now over. We'd like to remind you that you could leave the park either through the front gate entrance or through the sky ride. Thank you. <laughs> That's the reason for this legend city in the valley of the sun.